Hello everyone and welcome back to Phil's shop. This video will showcase a bicycle based snow plow solution I came up with and show you how you can make your own. Stay tuned. This is the second version snow plow that you're watching now. The first version was a single side exit plow that I built in January 2021 and this worked surprisingly well so I decided to build a second version except this time go for a v-split that I figured might be a bit easier to control. Let's get into the build portion here. I built these plows using materials I had lying around and this included a 200 liter polyethylene barrel that I was using to collect rainwater. Uh, these are commonly available most places. Some scrap 2x4s, the longest being uh, two 5-footers to attach the plow to the bike and four three-foot scrap sections to make the actual frame for the plow. We also needed some scrap plywood for reinforcement, as well as uh, some two and three to four inch wood screws, uh, some bolts to attach the plow to the bike, and some tie down style ratchet straps to lift and lower the plow. There's probably a million ways to do this, probably many better ways, but this is just what I had on hand at the time. Next, we're going to, of course, need some tools. Grab your safety glasses, as well as your measuring tape and pen. Uh, you're gonna also need a drill for this, a jigsaw for cutting the blades, as well as a circular saw. And I used a e-bike battery powered chainsaw to make the compound cuts to join the arms onto the plow. There's probably a number of other tools that you could use for this as well. Next thing to do is grab the plastic barrel and mark off 18 inches or so around the side. This is gonna be the height of one of our plow blades. I marked both off at the same time in preparation for cutting this out with the circular saw. Before you start cutting, it's a good idea to put down a tarp or some kind of a sheet to collect the plastic shavings. And you're probably going to want hearing protection for this and gloves are a good idea as well. Make your cut vertically along your marked line and you can go right through the top, it doesn't matter. Rotate your bell around and prepare for the next cut. Same thing as the first one, just cut vertically and right through to the top. Next, we're going to grab the circular saw again and cut the blade free from the barrel. We're gonna start at the bottom edge here and cut all the way through both of the blade ends. This will free both of them from the barrel at the same time and then we can just flip it around and do the same thing on the other side. Once you've cut the top and bottom of the blades out from the barrel, they should just pop right out. And at that point, you've got your blades removed from the barrel. Good job. As you can see here, it's quite the mess. So it is a good idea to put something down if you're working outside or if you're inside, I guess you can just vacuum it up. Now is a good time to check fitment of the blades onto your bike. Here I'm sort of checking to see how wide it's going to be and what kind of angle I should build it for. I ended up just going with a 90 degree angle between the blades and it seemed to fit pretty good on my bike here. The next thing we're going to do is start assembling the wooden frame. You can grab your two three foot or so two by fours and set them up at a 90 degree angle. I had these footings conveniently available to hold the pieces, but you can just do it on the ground. I cut out some triangular reinforcement plywood for reinforcing the top of the frame. I cut out two thinking I was gonna use one on the bottom, but you only wanna use one on top because you're gonna put additional two by fours on the bottom edge of the wood frame. I think I just used two inch screws here to secure the plywood reinforcement to the frame. 
that seemed like plenty, but honestly you can use whatever you have around as long as it's long enough to bite into the 2x4s okay. Unfortunately now the shots are out of sequence, but the next step is to screw the remaining 2x4 sections to the underside of the vertical 2x4s, overlapping them opposite to the top 2x4s. Once you've done this, you can flip the whole thing over and cut the end of the bottom 2x4s off at a, about a 30 degree angle with the circular saw to give something for the plow blades to screw into. Jumping back in time now, we're going to want to get the arm length figured out based on where we're going to attach to onto the bike. So instead of these concrete blocks, I recommend using flat 2x4s to raise the frame about 2 inches off of the ground and that'll set the height just right for how it'll be in the end. For this build, I already had holes from the previous plow design, so I'm gonna reuse those existing holes. The reason why I went as far back as I did is so that when the plow is scraping along, if it hits something, the force applied is gonna be more towards the center of the bike and hopefully not lift the bike up into the air. Uh, my fear is that if it was further forward and I caught something, it might actually catapult the bike over the plow. So I'm thinking further back is better, but you'll have to figure out what works for your platform. The next head scratcher is attaching the arms onto the wooden plow frame. You're gonna want to attach the arms to your bike Get the plow in its roughly final position and raise it off the ground with two by four blocks about two inches and then you can lay the arms over top of the plow frame and get a sense of the vertical cut you're going to want to make to join the plow frame and the arms this is kind of tricky and i sort of use my leg to hold the arm as i tried to cut as straight as possible downward. Doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, before you do this, just double check that the wheel can move from left to right and that the plow will be able to go up and down uh, before you make your final cuts on the arms. Now that your arms are cut, you can screw them to the wood frame section. I screwed in through the front and then cut these plywood reinforcement pieces to reinforce the joint between the frame and the arms. Here we are screwing in the plywood sections. Now these plywood pieces are not going to sit exactly flat because there's an angle between the plow frame and the arms. This is okay. I just screwed a few screws onto the arms as well as onto the frame. The video is out of sequence here because I actually changed the design after this first uh, sort of perfectly flat variant didn't exactly come out like how I wanted. Um, however, I did reuse these reinforcement uh, plywood pieces here. Um, in the end, they just reinforce but don't sit perfectly flat, which is fine. Here is what it should look like when you're done. Notice the arm and the frame are perfectly joined and the plywood reinforcement is sitting a little high in the middle. This is fine. Once your wood frame is complete, you can grab your plow blades and get them into position. Here the angle shown is a bit more shallow than it was in the final version. So I'd recommend setting the plow blades with a bottom angle of about 60 degrees or so. And this will allow you to join the blades together at the top. I'll show you at the end here. Once you've made your scribe, grab your 
jigsaw and cut out along your marked path. You'll do this with the next plow once you get this one into place. You'll then scribe onto the other plow and cut it out the same way that you're doing this one here. Once you get the piece you just cut back into position, go ahead and scribe with your sharpie on the other plow blade and remove it and cut it just like you did the first one. Once you get your two plow blades cut, you can screw them into place. I actually ended up flipping my blade set upside down so that I could get a more steep plow blade angle. And once you're happy with your angle, you can screw it in with the uh, screws going into the lower angled two x four and then also tagging into the vertical two x four at its highest point. Do this for both plow sides, obviously, uh, sort of leading one in front of the other. And once you've done it both sides, I have popped in a rivet, a couple of rivets here uh, to keep the tops from flapping apart and that worked uh, pretty well. And that's it, the plow is basically assembled. Now we're just going to go over the lift and lower strap mechanism. This was just an easy way to do it with parts I had on hand. It'd be cool to use a linear actuator or perhaps some sort of a lever or something like that, but this worked okay and was easy enough to just slap together. Here we see how it's attached to the arms. Both the straps are on the same strap and I just feed the end through the ratchet and that's it. Here's a clip of me plowing a mostly plowed sidewalk. Uh, you'll probably want to keep the plow lifted if you're commuting between plow spots and then set it down when you're ready to plow. The entire contraption is kind of hard to balance when you get on it for the first time. Uh, I'm doing some test passes here before there was very much snow on the ground and it seemed like it was almost unrideable at first, but within a few minutes I managed to get the sort of counterbalancing feel of it and it ended up being uh, not too bad. I was able to ride it around for an hour and a half on that first night. Here I'm a little more comfortable and uh, cruising at a bit of a faster speed here, maybe doing about 15 kilometers per hour. You can see the beautiful snow wave that's coming out of either side of the plow. Uh, I guess there's some thought about how you want to plow. I was trying to plow a center channel and then on the return just widen it with one half of the plow, but that didn't always quite pan out. This shot right here is probably one of my favorites from the night I was riding. I actually didn't know that this cyclist was behind me until I saw their lights, but it made for a pretty sweet shot letting up the snow wake that I was throwing in behind the plow. A few of the most commonly asked questions about the plow have been how deep of the snow can you plow and I would say the ideal is probably under four inches. I think it could do up to six. Um, but I tried in a foot and that was too much so it does have its limitations. I ended up riding about 16 kilometers that night riding uh, along a shared pedestrian cycling trail all the way into downtown Victoria. Here I am crossing the Johnson Street Bridge and in a moment he'll I'll catch an edge right there and you can see the plow just sort of jumps over it uh, but it doesn't seem too bothered by it at all. I caught a lot of edges it just seemed to skip right over no problem. I continued my way in through downtown uh, past a bunch of people at the bus stop here got a lot of laughs 
and uh, continued my way over to a Vietnamese spot to pick up some takeout. Uh, here it is, Greenleaf Bistro, where I got my dinner and started my ride all the way back home. And that's it. Thanks for watching this video. I uh, look forward to making more content soon and maybe even making a new plow version. Maybe with a salt sprayer or sand sprayer? Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see more bikes that I build and sell, head over to sustainawave.ca and follow along there. <laughs>